I've read about a few people lately who supported Senator Clinton or some other Democrat in the primary race and are now hell-bent on voting for John McCain, Cynthia McKinney, or somebody else just to teach the Democratic National Committee or Senator Obama a lesson. Hearing that frustrates me, though, because as Jack Nicholson's character said in As Good As It Gets, I don't have this mountain of available time. And I'll bet I'm not the only Democrat, the only American, who doesn't have time for the selfish motives those voters are showcasing. We don't have this mountain of available time to wait for affordable health care in this country. We don't have some mountain of available time to wait for decent jobs with livable pay. We don't have time to waste if we're going to act in time to prevent climate catastrophe. Those of us who are gay and lesbian don't have time to wait to make sure that our families are recognized, respected, and protected. Now maybe marriage can wait, but retirement benefits, hospital visitation rights, adoption rights, joint ownership, partner health insurance, partner life insurance, social security, and death benefits cannot wait. We don't have this mountain of available lifetimes. We don't have time to wait to make sure no more of our cousins, siblings, parents, and kids have to put life on hold to risk death in Iraq. We don't have time to make sure our little children, born and unborn, can afford to go to college someday without relying on predatory student loans. And we don't have time to wait to make sure our little children, born and unborn, and their children, and their children's children, don't end up in Iraq someday because John McCain decided to keep our troops there for a hundred years. It must be nice to be able to nurse personal grievances to see this as an academic question without real consequences. It must be nice to be able to seriously consider voting for John McCain or a third party candidate out of spite, putting pride before party and before country. Believe me, I understand what the Clinton people are feeling right now. Though of course he took his candidacy nowhere near as far as Senator Clinton took hers, I felt Howard Dean was hounded out of the race in 2004 unfairly by nasty campaign ads and media distortions about his famous scream in Iowa. I had followed him personally and politically since the year 2000, and it was extremely painful to let go of his candidacy and unite behind John Kerry. Even this year, I felt that Senator Obama suffered from racism, xenophobia, and outright lies about his patriotism, his faith, and his family. Had he lost, I almost certainly would have blamed prejudice, negativity, and media bias rather than giving credit to Senator Clinton for simply being a better candidate. So I understand where folks are coming from. In every basketball game, and especially in the close ones, the losing team always takes issue not only with its opponents, but with the referees as well. It's human nature. But we have kids to raise, jobs to work, bills and mortgages to pay, and family and friends in harm's way in Iraq and Afghanistan. We just don't have the luxury of squabbling amongst ourselves about who suffered more from bigotry and unfairness this primary season. While there are well-meaning people on the Republican side, no doubt, we all know which party has no compunction about peddling stereotypes and playing on people's fears about women, black people, gays and lesbians, and other minorities. If the Republicans win this fall, we will all suffer from bigotry and unfairness. The only way to avoid being victims is to be victorious together, and we can't afford to fail. We can't afford four more years of empty saber-rattling while Iran marches undeterred down the path to a nuclear weapon. We can't afford four more years of four dollar a gallon gasoline. We can't afford four more years of troubled schools being forced to teach to the test. We can't afford four more years of failed environmental and health policies supported only by junk science and lobbyist dollars. We can't afford four more years of rampant deregulation of polluters, mammoth media corporations, and giant food and drug industries. We can't afford four more years of disrespect for the critical role labor unions play in our economy. And we can't afford four more years of economic and technological surrender and stagnation instead of investments and innovation. We can't afford four more years of a president who views faith as a gold mine instead of a golden opportunity. Our next president should understand that religious conviction isn't a weakness to exploit, but an ally to embrace. Now the Supreme Court is currently made up of seven Republicans and two Democrats. 
The two oldest at 88 and 75 are liberals. We can't afford to let John McCain name conservatives to replace them. We can't afford to risk to the whims of conservative justices such precious freedoms as the right to vote, the right to choose, the right not to be detained without probable cause, the right to face your accusers and have an attorney present at trial, the right to privacy, and the freedom of religion. History has shown us time and again that when people try to send a message by voting for a third party, a splinter party, or even the opposition, they end up with the candidate least likely to share their values. Without disaffected isolationist Republicans backing John Kennedy for Senate in 1952, he wouldn't have beaten Henry Cabot Lodge. Without disaffected progressive Republicans backing Teddy Roosevelt for an independent third term in 1912, Woodrow Wilson wouldn't have beaten William Taft. And more recently, without Ross Perot, there'd have been no Bill Clinton, and without Ralph Nader, there'd have been no George W. Bush. And today, without people bolting the Democratic Party to vote Republican, Green, or some other alternative, there'll be no John McCain. The old cliche is true. United we stand, divided we fall. United, we'll be unstoppable this November. Divided, we'll have four more years of shrinking assets, missed opportunities, neglected innovations, diminishing civil liberties, and dwindling dreams. Democrats, Americans, we can't afford a John McCain presidency. We just don't have that kind of time. Oh